We've got playoff baseball here at Oriole Park at Camden Yards, and we have got a doozy of a pitching matchup in game one between Corbin Burns and Cole Reagans. And to help me break it down, we've got our pitching ex expert, Ben McDonald. Ben, thanks for joining me. My pleasure. Always good, to, always good to be with you, and especially right before a little playoff baseball here at Camden Yards. Absolutely. Going to be exciting 24 hours from now. Now, game one, we know what the Orioles have in Corbin Burns. We right. saw Cole Reagans on the other side in April. If we were doing a Madison broadcast and you were giving me the breakdown of what we should expect from Cole Reagans in this game, give me the road rundown here. It's elite stuff, right? I mean, first full year as a starter, uh, he's already like 60-something innings more than he's ever pitched in his career, but yet in the month of September, he's been at his best. I mean, the ERA is a shade over one in his four starts, but it's an explosive fastball. From talk about velo standpoint, it's 94 to 98 with a lot of arm side run. So being left-handed, He's going to be able to get it up and away to the right-handers, up and in to the left-handers. It's above spin rate, four-seamer, so it has a lot of carry through the zone. So there's no two-seamers, no sinkers like F1. It's all here it is. See if you can hit it. It's got a lot of ride to it. His best pitch is his changeup, and that's what makes him elite. I mean, that changeup is, I think, the best swing, second best swing and miss pitch in all of baseball. It's like 46% swing and miss. And when you look at the numbers and, and the little, you know, when you go to the diagram, you look at pitch savant, and you can see what makes the fastball and changeup so good. You know, he's able to throw that fastball and changeup kind of out of the same window, the same tunnel, but one of them's going to be 96 and one of them's going to be about 86 miles an hour. So it's a big difference in, in velocity. But I think what fools hitters is they come out, it comes out of that same window and they can't decipher what pitch it is as it travels towards home plate. And think that's what makes him tough. He's a strike thrower, a lot like Corbin Burns. He's not going to walk a ton of guys. He's not quite as good at control as Burns has, but he's a dude that's pitching with a lot of confidence right now. He's a real dude. He was their opening day starter, so he's kind of been in some big games, although he's really young in his career. Uh, I think he knows what it's all about. And so he's going to be tough. I mean, he's going to be a tough, tough customer because he's got the slider, the cutter, the curveball to go with it. And I tell you what, you know, you'll see the curveball against the lefties. He'll work the curveball and down on the way to the lefties. But it's just big-time stuff is what it is from a dude that can really, really pitch. Yeah, it's a lot of stuff moving away from hitters. Mm -hmm. Typically, the four-seam and the fastball, as you mentioned, they they normally have a little bit more vertical run. He does not have that. It, they don't drop a ton, and they have a ton of horizontal right. movement. So, as you mentioned, the four-seam to a right-handed hitter is going to go away from that righty. The changeup is as well. What makes it so difficult for a right-handed hitter to hit a guy like that as opposed to what they're normally seeing from a left-handed pitcher? Well, one, you got extra velo, so it's above average fastball. And then when you add the hop to it. Now, the good news for the Orioles, and you know this, is they've seen Reagans twice. Now, it was a long time ago. It was in the month of April, and yeah. he stuffed them one time. I think he went six in. He gave it one hit, no runs. And then the Orioles you know, put his worst start of the year on him. I think they, they got seven on him in an inning in the third. That was yep. over in Kansas City, and I did that ball game, and the Orioles were able to – kind of piecemeal some hits together, which is hard to do against Reagan. I mean, his opponent's batting average for the year is 213, so he doesn't give up many hits. He does a good job of keeping the ball in the ballpark, too. Now, some people would say, well, you're pitching Kansas City. That's a nice pitcher's ballpark, and it is. But still, he does a nice job of keeping the ball in the ballpark. But I think that's the challenge of him. And, you know, honestly, when you face a guy like Burns and you face a guy like you're going to see in Cole Reagan's, you got to hope they have a little bit of an off day. Because if they're on their game, they're doing what they've done pretty well all year long, it's not going to be a high-scoring affair. And it feels like one swing could determine this. It may be a, a walk and a homer or something like this. I, I wouldn't be shocked if we see a 3-2 to ball game or a 2-1 to one type ball game. Because I think both these pitchers, and you know, you mentioned Corbin Burns, obviously had the struggles in the month of August. But, man, his last six starts, what is it, a 1-3 ERA? Yeah. So he's back on track again and pitching like a real dude again. And so – we're arguably going to have a matchup of arguably the two hottest pitchers in baseball yeah. starters over the last month of the season. Yeah, so when you're going into a game like this against somebody like Cole Reagans, who, as you mentioned, the ERA is just over one in the last month. He has been absolutely dominant, one of the best pitchers in baseball. Do you go up against Reagans and just look for mistakes? Is there certain things that you can look for? Because against right-handed hitters, as mentioned, the fastball change up, righties will probably see 60-70% of the time. Right. Left-handed hitters, yes, it is the slider and cutter are going to be a little bit worse, but those are still quality pitches, and it's a left-on-left, -left, so that's a tough matchup for a left-handed mm -hmm. hitter. Is there something in particular with Reagans that you look for, or do you just hope for mistakes and have to capitalize? That? I think when you get counts in your favor or OO type counts, I think the Orioles can go up there and sit on a certain pitch in a certain location. I think that's got to be the approach, right? Obviously, when you talk about facing any starter, especially a starter of this caliber, is you want to keep him in the strike zone. Tag balls over the white part of the plate if you can. 
The key with him is when you do get him in some plus counts and you get him in a 1-0, 2-0, 3-1 type count, maybe you sit on a certain pitch and say, okay, I'm going to look for the changeup. And if you throw something other than that, you take it to strike, you still live for another pitch. So I think the Orioles are going to have to be really selective. Now, I don't want to take their aggressive, aggressiveness away from them because – Man, the last six games, the Orioles have been really good. You know, we went through that stretch of, what was it, 16 games before these last six were, I think we only averaged about 2.7 runs per game. But it's over six runs a game in the yeah. last six games. So, and hitting with runners in scoring position, which the Orioles haven't done a good job of since the All-Star break, that's been a lot better. I love where our offense is and where it's trending right now. But I think going back to Reagan's, I think it's going to be about the approach. Okay, when you step in the box, are you looking for a certain pitch in a certain location? And if you get that pitch that location – Get your swing off if that's what you're looking for. And then when you work him and you are able, lucky enough to get him in those plus counts, 2 0 3 one type counts, that's when you really sit on a certain pitch and try to do damage on it. When you get two strikes off Reagan's, all bets are off because, I mean, the dude can pitch. I mean, I mean, he can 200-something strikeouts on yeah. a year. Like, he can finish you when he gets ahead of you. So you hope he has a little bit of a bad day, and you hope you get yourself in some plus counts. Yeah, got to get in some good counts and got to get runners on base as well because statistically he has been worse out of the stretch than he is out of the windup this yeah. year. And so. we talked about this, and what's really odd about him, too, is his runners in scoring position. So, I mean, opponents only hit 213 off of him overall, but opponents are hitting 279 off of Reagan's with runners yeah. in scoring position. That is big. That's a big number. For a guy that, I mean, lefties are hitting 276, righties 195, but the risk is 279. So when the Orioles do get those opportunities, man, they got to be good in those opportunities. Yeah, and that's an important thing, too, there you mentioned, the reverse splits for Cole Reagans. Typically, as a left-handed pitcher, you would anticipate that you're better against lefties and right. worse against righties because those pitches are coming in. But for Reagans, his pitch shapes are so unique mm -hmm. that against right-handed pitching, against right-handed hitting, excuse me, a lot of stuff going away from them. And for lefties, it is stuff going away from them, but it's not as good. So would you anticipate that the Orioles are still going to stack their lineup with as many right-handers as possible? Or do you look at those splits and say, okay, guys like Colton Kowser, Cedric Mullins, you might have a chance to do some damage here? Yeah, I mean, when I look at – I mean, you're talking about an 80-point difference between right-handers and left. Yeah. And that's not a sample size. That's over the course of 32 starts, right? And so, for me, I think there's two things going on. One – when you talk about Mullins and Cowser, you talk about difference makers on both sides of the ball. Guys, and we know here at Camden Yards, you've got to have somebody in left field, especially in playoff-type games, that could cover a lot of ground out there. That's Colton Cowser. Defensive run saves are off the charts. So, for me, tomorrow, when I look at the outfield configuration, I think it's going to be Cowser in left, Mullins in center, Santander in his usual spot out in right field. Just because I, I look at these numbers and I see that what lefties are hitting, I think Cowser has to be in the game for that and for his defense, and I think Mullins – has arguably been the best hitter the Orioles had since the All-Star break. Yeah. I think he's got to be in there, too. And so I think that's what you're going to see from the outfield. And now I don't know what they're going to do at the DH spot. I feel like Mountcastle will obviously play first base. I don't know if O'Hearn DHs are. Maybe it's Rivera or maybe it's because Rivera had a heck of a series in Minnesota. So maybe it's him. I don't know. But I look, to answer your question, I look for Brandon Hyde to run some lefties out there just when I look at these numbers. Yeah, the numbers would back that up. I know typically the Orioles go for just as many right-handed hitters as possible against lefties, but with Cole Reagans, it might be an opposite story. Right. Last question I have for you here, Ben. If we get to Wednesday and we look back and said, man, the Orioles had a really good day Tuesday night against Cole Reagans, what will you tell me happened? I would say, A, Burns was really good like he's been for the last six starts. He stuffed them, right? Uh, and this is a Kansas City Royals team. I hate to say this, but they've kind of limping into the playoffs. Like, they've not been great. I mean, they've had, what, two seven-game losing streaks in the last month. Yeah. So, this was a below 500 month for them. So, they're not playing their best baseball right now. Like, they're, they're not scoring a lot of runs. They're still pitching it really well, and I think that is the strength of their team. But I think, one, Corbin Burns went out and pitched like a true ace. I think, too, the Orioles got some big hits with runners in scoring position. When it mattered and they were able to move some guys, they came up with those big base hits with runners in scoring position. Again, I don't anticipate a high-scoring game here. I just think these two pitchers are too good right now. So I'm And, and another thing I'm going to tell you this, too, the Orioles play clean defense. This is the kind of team, man, in the playoff time, you can't afford to make the errors and give teams second opportunities in playoff situations. So Burns be good couple of clutch base hits, and be clean on defense. Yeah, well, these two pitchers may not make many mistakes, so the Orioles are going to have to capitalize on those when and if they happen, but should be an exciting game yes, between two ace pitchers, and we're excited to see you on the broadcast, Ben. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it, man. <laughs> going to be TV on ESPN and Oriole baseball and the Royals. we got a big-time matchup, so it's going to be a lot of fun. Thanks, Ben. Appreciate right. it. My pleasure.